Hi, I'm Veronica Ariola, and my favorite thing is Title IX. Welcome to the Finding Favorites podcast, where we explore your favorite things without using an algorithm. Here's your host, Leah Jones. Hello and welcome to Finding Favorites. I'm your host, Leah Jones, and this is the podcast where we learn about people's favorite things without using an algorithm. We are back with Veronica Ariola, host of The Feminist Agenda. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm like, what? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to, I should jump in and you be like, You can jump in? Hey. How are you? I'm great. We are not on Zoom. We are in person. We can like touch each other. We can touch each other. Uh. Ah! Over the mountain, over a hill of candy <laughs> that is part of Candy Chat Chicago, but we're doing Finding Favorites in person, live and in person. Yes. Ah, how is your summer going? Uh, fast. Yeah. I mean, tomorrow is August 1st. Shut up. Oh, shit. It's my mom's birthday. It's my daughter's birthday. Oh, Leo season. It is Leo yeah. season. Um, and then Cinnamon's is on t- the next day. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay. All the birthdays. All the birthdays. Wow. Yeah. And then she is off to back off to school. Back off to school. That's right. Wow. Year two. Boom, boom. Uh, how lucky that she got to go back in a post-vaccine world. I know, really. Get to do college. Absolutely. Yeah, she's she's enjoying it. Yeah. Um, so you're wearing your. I want to be like. Oh, I, you wore the shirt the last time too. I did that really. I because wow. I know I mispronounced it. Oh, Rapino. Uh, Rapino. Yep. <laughs> I want to be like Megan Rapino yes. when I grow up. Yes. So the last time you were here, yes. we were talking about women's salary and sports and the importance of going to sports. Yes. And how you helped start a movement in women's soccer that like concluded in a win this year? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, I think you're overstating it, but I did contribute. I'm not, over, I'm not overstating it. Didn't you help organize the first protest in front of the I did. soccer? I, I did. Yes. Yes. I did organize a protest in front of U.S. soccer, which yeah. is headquartered here in Chicago in yes. the South Loop. Yeah. So I'm not overstating it when I say that you <laughs> helped start the movement and now the women are, are being paid more like the professionals they are. Yes. I, I, is it true parity with the men? As far as I can tell, it's pretty much true parity. Okay. Yes. And if, even so much that the men now have um, equitable access to parental leave and some things oh. like that. So they it's can bring their like babies. F- feminism is good for everyone. I, I, it's When I think people so? are treated equal, the men get get some things that they I haven't mean, had access to before I thought feminism was just about women running the world and yeah. smashing men but apparently yeah. men win too how interesting hmm. we'll have to investigate that yeah wait the men weren't allowed to bring their babies um i i think that they could but i think that now that they have some access to some more rights mm. and and services yeah. so not i'm sure the top tier guys could always bring their babies right maybe the guys who are rookies couldn't because they couldn't afford it right they couldn't afford it or they couldn't socially afford it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Amazing. Um, and you also, um, we talked about the importance of season tickets and you have season yes. tickets to the Chicago Sky this I summer. I do, I do. Um, and I asked you about this and I was like, well, you're going to have to tell me on mic. So there's currently something called the Chairman's Cup. It you was the- literally just told me and I immediately <laughs> forgot. It's okay. I called it the Commissioner's Cup. That was wrong. No, it, was, the, it is the Commissioner's, is the, commissioner's okay. Cup. Yes, it is the Commissioner's okay. Cup. Okay. So it was it, the Commissioner's Cup was this past Tuesday, the final. It was an in-season tournament where certain t- games were tagged as Commissioner Cup okay. games. And then it and turned out to be the Chicago Sky versus the Las Vegas Aces. And we got creamed. What? Yes. The, Aren't the Chicago Sky the returning champs? We are. Yeah. And we still have the number one record in the league. But something happened on Tuesday where we started the game off I, like 20 to nothing. Yes, I know. I was just sitting there with my mask on, but also my hand over my right. hand, masked mouth. Like, what, like, what is, is going, going on? on? I've been going to Sky Games forever. Right. Since they started. And it's been a long time since I've been like, wow, we are getting our butt. Just didn't show up. It did not show up. Yeah. We tried really hard. We came within about eight points in the third quarter, but Vegas just kept it. I mean, big tip of the hat because they wanted it. They came out. Yeah. Cup. 
is just like single single game, right? So yeah. they're not in the middle of like a five game series no. or anything. No, it was okay. just a single turn single game. Single game tournament. And that you were saying we've borrowed from European soccer clubs. Somebody else explained okay. it to me that this is how European soccer runs with all these smaller tournaments within. Mm-hmm. Um and the fans love it, and so do some of the players, but really everyone's eye is on the championship. Right. And so the championship for the WNBA is still a few weeks, months away. Okay. I don't know what the schedule is off the top of my head, but our regular season ends about mid-August. Okay. And the Sky are? Number one. Number one. Number one. So losing our... the Commissioner's Cup doesn't knock them out of the finals. Correct. Okay. It was... An ego bruise. Yeah. A lot to learn, especially since I'm pretty sure we'll see the aces in the playoffs, if not the finals. Yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. So it'll give them, like, when when they see them again in the finals, yes. it's going to give them a different energy to that playoff series. Absolutely, yes. Okay. I'm into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were offered, we had some tickets left over at work on Tuesday, and we got an email, and I was trying to understand it, and I'm like, it doesn't seem like it's the finals, uh, is it is is it just like are we all getting bobbleheads of the commissioner? Like I just couldn't <laughs> quite figure it out. The 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 I think the best thing that came out of this is that the uh, uh, it it really was very much about energy. I mean, I went and it was not sold out like it was at the finals last mm-hmm. year, but there was definitely an energy like there right. is something on the line. Yeah, and there was a lot of money on the line for the players because mm. as we've talked before Mm -hmm. women's professional athletes do not get paid LeBron money Um, and so the winners of the cup I believe each got $40,000 which is a huge chunk of change for anybody but especially in it but even women right and it is was that anyone on the winning team or anyone who touched the boards on the like if I'm a if I if I just ride the bench if you just ride aces, the bench yeah they they you got were getting them. 40 thousand yep. actually absolutely that's great yeah yeah and it's know. that pay equity is why Brittany Griner is currently imprisoned 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 <laughs> in Russia yes is that she has had to go and play off season yes in in Europe le- European leagues yes for many years yes and she was going for her off season job mm-hmm Yes. And got arrested with a little bit of weed or a vape or a vape pen or something, something in her like that. Yes. Yeah. Some oils. Yes. So she was in Russia um, going to her, her Russian team, her right. off season team, her, right. her second job as yeah. a professional athlete. Yeah. What and team is she when she's, please, she's not Chicago, is she? No. Okay. She's Phoenix. She's Phoenix. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, hopefully this prisoner trade, were, like, I really. I I've, it felt like people were saying like nobody's talking about this nobody's talking about this and sometimes in those situations when nobody's talking about it I think it's because my hopefulness maybe my dumb optimism is that like the right people are talking very quietly about it I was feeling the same way at mm-hmm. the very beginning where it was very quiet and yeah. it took a few weeks for us to find out that this is what was happening right and I was like okay well that means the people who are in the know are working very quietly. Mm-hmm. This is U.S. Russia. This is very delicate. Yeah. I've seen many movies in the '80s about this kind of right. tension. Right. And let's just keep our mouth shut. And mm-hmm. then finally, the WNBA, her teammates, her wife was like, "Nope, we need to make noise yeah. because the administration's not doing mm-hmm. what they thought they should be doing." And yeah, so now there's this. I think very hard trade on the on the table i'm like i'm very torn this tension yeah around this trade but i also want britney home so right yeah yeah it is uh because she was arrested after i think the ukraine war started yeah just about the same time yeah so it was not i i mean this is not a uh and now we're going to do redux (laughs) podcast Uh, this is, uh, I'm going to start having people back over for Trivial Pursuit Genus Edition 1, which was like my Cold War edition ah. because it was published during the Cold War. Yes. So like the the country, it's all USSR and it's yes. all like, yes. so we don't have to do like a Cold War redux based on, because <laughs> it's neither of our specialties. 
<laughs> but, I mean, unless we're talking like, as I said, 1980 movies about the yes, Russians. Yes. And the Soviets. And yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It's so weird. Um, and how is your softball league going? Um, it's going pretty well. We were, uh, <laughs> Last week was pretty rough because Monday we went into our game undefeated and uh-huh. got our butts completely oh, crushed. Oh, no. Yes. The other Uh-oh. team just was stacked with like five or six guys who could just crush the softball. No. And there was just no defense to that. Were you like, hey, recreation league? It is rec- <laughs> recreation league. Go to the, I don't know what sports league the people who care about, the people who I are think, athletic go to. I think like the lakefront ones where yeah. everyone's just out of college and plays re- mm-hmm. with that kind of spirit. Most of us are 30s, 40s. Some yeah. of us are 50s. Right. Um, media journalists. So yeah. more askew, you know. Right. connected to that and so it's very much a beer softball league yeah and then this one team is just like stacked oh no. crushed it they're probably at whatever today's group on is <laughs> i'm like what even is it i don't even know enough anymore to like make the right joke like what is they probably all work at spot hero i don't know <laughs> google google i guess google yeah yeah Google's always a good thing, <laughs> i don't but, yeah. know yeah know. so then monday we got our butts kicked in softball and then tuesday this guy got their butts kicked in the game mm. and it was just like wow let's go to the next yeah next week please time for a nap yes yeah so a few weeks ago you sent me a text and said and asked if I was doing a special episode about Title IX, since everybody was doing special episodes about Title IX. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I, I am now. You I'm, are now. I'm, I'm doing one now. <laughs> um, so we're here today to talk about your favorite law. Yes. Title IX. Yes. Let me tell you what I think is Title IX. Okay. It's why we have girls sports in school. Absolutely. And that's... And then lately I've seen some stuff about sexual assault. Yes. Also in the same breath as Title IX. Yes. That's all I know. That's all you know. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It is true, but it is just <laughs> a part of what Title IX is. <laughs> so uh, w- how about let's start with a, a, pr- a primer, a primer, mm-hmm. uh, like a short explanation of Title IX, yeah. and then we'll get into like why, why, do, why it's your favorite, yeah. how you learned about it, all this stuff. But like what is, if it's, it is yes, girls' sports, okay. and yes, sexual assault safety mm-hmm. and and stuff. Uh, but what is it really? Um, Title IX is a 1972 federal law that says very simply. It's like two or three sentences long. It's really one of the most um, shortest laws out there that has done such impactful things just says that no one can be denied educational access to educational things Mm -hmm. and activities based on their sex okay so it was written for girls to have access to educational opportunities okay because prior to title IX, schools particularly colleges and universities could have gender quotas Mm. very much like I do believe uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg talked a lot about when she went to law school there were there were slots for like three women Mm -hmm. I believe in her class and like one of those slots could be for the Jewish women Um, and so there were lots of quotas and that even the men were like those three spots are taking away from us yes it's three men that could have been here exactly yeah and so Title IX tried to put an end to it and did put an end to those kinds of quotas and this is access is this uh like comma if you get federal funding yes okay if you get federal funding okay and almost every school does get some sort of federal Mm -hmm. funding so even the fact that your students get federal aid student Mm -hmm. aid puts you under the guise so if your students are getting pell grants yes or or student loans that are part of the yes right okay so that's how it impacts like even a, a like a private school that's well endowed. Like if they want to offer Pell Grants. Yes. Then they have to start offering yes. it. OK. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I was listening to another podcast on Title IX mm-hmm. and they were the person I was listening to was talking about how 
there's this phrase and activities in mm. the act and that's the catch-all for everything else that has spewed from and grew from wow. Title IX. So it was much more than just access to a classroom, access to schools, yeah. but and activities then covered sports, after school activities, and then was brought into um, safety around harassment and sexual assault. Okay. And yeah. then the Obama administration tried to and did broaden it to include transgender students. Mm-hmm. And then the next administration, which I won't name, pulled that away. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember my mom, you know, my sister and I did, we, uh, we did basketball at the Y. I don't think either of us actually played basketball at school. Um, but my mom was six feet tall and her brothers were taller than her. And she's like, well, no, I didn't play basketball because... And, like, she would just be like, well, because Title IX didn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. And, like, you have opportunities in high school because of Title IX. So that's how I was aware that it it impacted my life was that we had girls basketball and track and tennis and um, all the things we had in high school Mm -hmm. that are that none of our moms had had access to. Yeah. um, By the time, you know, when we got to high school in the 90s. Right. So. Um. But then I think I did not realize that it impacted higher ed mm-hmm. at all. I had no, I just thought it was public school, K through 12. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it impacts higher ed and it impacts not just students in higher ed mm-hmm. and in high school, but the staff, faculty, teachers Yeah, in, as well. So it's the whole Everyone. institution. How did you become aware of Title IX? It's just a good question. I've been trying to figure that out. And I think it had to have been somewhere around late middle school Mm -hmm. um, because I have played sports all through elementary school. Mm -hmm. And my my dad has three girls and he is huge into sports and he taught us all how to play. Yeah. And not just taught us how to play, but that we deserve to play. Yeah. We deserve to have space Mm -hmm. on a team, on the field. And I just ate that up. And so it didn't dawn on me that there was a law about it until about middle school. Yeah. When I think I think there was just something about our elementary school, you know, moving into middle school and this yeah. larger entity. And then when in eighth grade, when we started signing up for which sports we wanted mm-hmm. to play in high school, uh, my best friend and I were both really strong girls and yeah. they were like we should go out for football because we actually were pretty good at catching right. and throwing yeah. the ball um, and the football coach laughed at us and I was and there was something I was like I don't think you can do that right and I think that's when I was like there must be something that is behind huh. this right and yeah so I'm sure me being curious and right. all about equity and fairness and like yeah. I know this can't be fair and yeah. right and legal so let me figure this out yeah because i remember there being uh, i think in every high school band era there's like a story of like the one girl who's a kicker here yeah. or the one girl in the country of your age that mm-hmm. gets into onto a football team mm-hmm. though like kind of makes the rounds right and uh, and, and stuff but yeah it was because our dad made sure, like, we knew how to throw it, snap a tight spiral. Absolutely. It was a life skill. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, was knowing how to throw a football, football, like, knowing, like, the basics of, like, understanding the game, being able to, like, watch it from the stands. And I'm certain if I had decided I wanted to go out for football that my dad would have driven me there and fought the coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, but instead, I did marching band. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's a choice. Swimming. Yes. I mean, yeah. I was in color guard. Yeah. So, yeah. You but know, it, now that you're you're talking about that, it might have been the fact that there is a classic movie called Quarterback Princess yeah. starring the uh, award winning Helen Hunt. Yes. Um, that I watched a lot as a kid. So yeah. probably around fifth, sixth grade. So that might have been formative to me being aware that there was some sort of law. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the movie, I'll have to watch it again to see if they actually talk about Ted Yeah. Line. But I'm pretty sure there was definitely a school board meeting about mm-hmm. this girl who right. wants to be the quarterback. Right. Absolutely. Shout out to Helen Hunt. 
And I also think there was, I'm not, I was not aware of it of, of, at the time. Mm-hmm. This is me like <clears throat> having an aha moment as we're talking, which is like the, my girl sports coaches were men mm-hmm. because the women of that age yet hadn't been allowed to compete in Mm -hmm. the sports like the I assume now like your daughter had women coaches she did um and probably also male coaches but Mm -hmm. like you know we had one woman who taught in gym Mm -hmm. I don't think she coached Mm, no I'm lying I think maybe she did coach girls basketball but a lot of girls sports Mm -hmm. were still coached by men I think just because the teachers Like, there weren't teachers in the system yet who had benefited from Title IX Mm -hmm. to get to coaching. I don't know. I mean, when I played softball in high school, all of our coaches were women. Okay. Um, And my daughter did have... She had a few women coaches, but mostly in rec league. Okay. Um, Her club team did have a few women coaches. And we pressed them as parents saying, our daughters deserve women coaches. Right, right. Um, But in high school, she had all guys. Yeah, all men. I'm uh, I'm looking great. around. I'm like, where is my high school yearbook? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> um, I I did look this up, and in 1972, 90 percent of women's sporting teams had women coaches. Oh. So there there was a so there women w- who were coaching. Okay. In, by 2019, that number has dropped to 43 percent. And mostly that is due to the rise of women's sports as in the prestige. Oh. So kind of like, you know, in a league of their own. Right. Tom Hanks is a character, you know, as a fall down drunk. And the only he thing left of him is, left women. is coaching the women's baseball team. Oh. And now it's prestigious to be. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That's how far we've come. Wow. Slipping through your high school year but yeah uh, i have but yeah so it's a i mean women coaching women is a huge right point of discussion in the title nine circles um because we used to have so many women and there was definitely a, a time where men did have more experience right. to be quote better coaches um so like the like Bill Lambeer, who we grew up watching mm-hmm. kick around the Chicago Bulls okay. and we would kick him around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and but he was he has been one of the best WNBA coaches. Yeah. Um, but then when he retired, he retired and uh, Becky Hammond, who was a legendary WNBA player yeah. herself, is now their head coach in Vegas. So there is this tension and push to get more women to be coaches so every time the chicago sky have a woman coach i'm very happy i mean i love coach wade he got us a championship yeah but now Um, they have a woman but no i mean we have we have we have a guy you have a guy yeah right now so Um, here's our women's our lady lady braves lady Uh, braves (laughs) they've changed the mascot it's a little, oh, 90s. little less it's they're they're still the Braves and the Patriots are the other school but the Braves is at least now an arrowhead and not a headdress <laughs> it is slight improvements so yeah steps. so here's coach Larry Stuckey coach Alan Maraska um who have we got here for coaches coach Stuckey so like, and these women, they, I mean, they were girls. It was our girls team. It was high school. Mm-hmm. Um, they were like going to state. Let's see. Do we oh. have a picture of coach Cheryl? So, so volleyball had a woman coaching. Wrestling didn't have any girls on it. Soccer was a huge team. Let's see. I think we had a girls team. Wait, surely we did. Oh yeah, this picture is the girls and boys teams oh, together. Oh, that's which is nice. kind of nice. Yeah. Gymnastics had women coaches. Mm-hmm. 
I'm now like copy editing this as I'm flipping through. So like <laughs> track uses first initial last name. Other sports use first name, last name. So so I guess we had no, more women not- coaching than I was aware of. Okay. Um, but we had like a husband and wife um, lead the marching band. The husband was the band director. The wife did the color guard. Is it the same thing in my my high school, junior, senior year? Yeah. Yeah. I really stepped up our band. Our, our marching band. Okay, so and activities mm-hmm. is what's what got us to have for us to have the high school and middle school experiences we had for your daughter to have even more opportunities. Absolutely, yes. Um, and now you have, you have worked at a college campus now for 20 years, almost 30 years, almost 30 years. That's impossible because we're still in our 20s. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, for almost 30 years. And I can only imagine your awareness of the complexities of this short. It's a really, it's two sentences, right? But it's like the, I feel like on college campuses, it'll get 60 pages of rules, right? Of Absolutely. like how you deal with it. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's something people say, right? A title nine complaint. Yes. A title nine complaint. Yeah. There are, there are rules. There are, um, in terms of sports, there's a three prong test. Okay. In terms of how you can prove that you are ad- adhering to title nine. Okay. And I feel like, in the 90s, there were a lot more Title IX issues in the news because a lot of high schools and colleges were um, uh, taking away boys' sports, men's sports, mm-hmm. and they were saying it's because of Title IX. It's because of Title IX. That's because that instead of expanding to women, they took away from the yes, men. Yes, exactly. So there's three ways that a school can say that they are adhering to Title IX. Okay. And one of them is proportionality. Okay. So if you have 50-50 men, women uh, in your student population, that's what your sports should look like. Okay. And so if it's not, then some schools just, you know. Okay. They, cl- they cancel the wrestling team. They cancel right. the cross. But Bowling, it doesn't even say... It doesn't even say you have to have a girls football team. It just says Correct. like, so gymnastics can account for football. Absolutely. And right. Some sports, tennis, soccer, mm-hmm. track, basketball, mm-hmm. those can be boys and girls. Yes. Swimming, boys and girls. Yes. But some sports, like there's lots of great, there's lots of boys who don't get to play volleyball. That's right. Which yes. is weird. Isn't that weird? It is weird. It is very weird. We yeah. did have a. I feel like we did have a boys volleyball team because I feel like I remember some of the guys who did play volleyball. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we had a boys volleyball team. Um, but it was one of the few. I right. feel like it was still like weird. And yeah. Like, oh, we have a boys volleyball team. Yay. But I think in a city um, like Chicago, at least you could field. You could probably come up with four, te- four to four to eight boys volleyball teams. So at least like, yeah, have someone, you know, you yeah. couldn't do that where I'm from. Yeah, absolutely. So, but the size of the team also matters. Okay. So I was also looking, you know, like doing my homework to do this. And apparently up until 2019 girls participation in high school still has not even surpassed 1972 boys participation. So the number of boys who were playing sports in high school in In 1972 1972 is larger than the number of girls who play sports in 2019 in high schools. in high schools. I know. So that's why I was going through looking at some of the data real quick and just looking at basketball, like the average boys basketball team is 29 players and the girls are 21. Okay. So even though the numbers, if you look at them, they're, they're fairly close. You you can eyeball and be like, Hey, it's almost 50, 50, Mm -hmm. but it's, then you look and you're like, huh? It's almost 50-50 in terms of team. Sure. But the number of bodies actually doing the sport right. is larger. And yeah, maybe there's more bench players in the right. boys. Maybe a lot right. more boys and actually never get in the game. Right. Because my... They still count. Nephew's high school downstate is a small high school. And once you have proven to be an athletic boy, they're like, <laughs> okay, so you'll be on all the sports right yes. mm-hmm. you'll be on 
uh, baseball and wrestling mm-hmm. and they don't have swimming. They don't have lacrosse. It's like, it's a, it's a baseball, basketball, wrestling and football high school. Okay. And then the girls have softball, basketball. I don't have any nieces downstate, so I don't know what the girls sports are. <laughs> <laughs> I know that my sister does a lot to try and do to support girls in baseball. Uh-huh. Cause she was the baseball. She was the, the league commissioner for oh. her, her no. park for her like little league in town. Mm-hmm. Um, she wound up being the commissioner. Yeah. And uh, she does. She is. She always did a lot to promote the girls that wanted um, to do baseball that mm-hmm. she would. She separated gender and sport. She like did these like subtle things to try <laughs> and change the culture, like not assuming that every girl played softball. Right. Um and then helping when the girls baseball national organization was like coming through mm-hmm. Illinois doing stuff to like let all the girls in her town know that if you want to go play baseball mm-hmm. this summer, here's how you do it. So mm. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The number of girls playing baseball and uh, not instead of not softball. Right. It continues to grow. It's yeah. not as fast as, you know, you would think. And I think it's because so many girls are just put into softball so early right and when we were kids there wasn't an organized softball I don't remember um so girls who were interested in that in baseball played baseball yeah still weren't a lot of us yeah and then it wasn't until you know like middle school I think then we were like oh here's a softball right yeah I I, I was it was a long time before I realized that softball had different techniques than baseball Mm -hmm. i just thought it meant girls baseball Uh uh-huh i didn't know yeah all right so step one parody parody (laughs) parody that's just the first thing and then the other is um just proving that you are moving towards more okay um and um yeah it's just showing that you have a history of continuing to open up more opportunities and then the other is demonstrating that everyone's interests are being fulfilled okay so even if you have more men's sports than women's sports but you've surveyed your student population and everyone's like actually i'm good yeah and and then you you're okay yeah so it doesn't have to be the exact it doesn't have to be 50 50 if your population is 50 50 if everyone is right cool with it okay so if you've, but if you've got students and parents mm-hmm. calling in constantly being like, yeah. my daughter can't get, she wants to do X, Y, Z and you don't offer right. anything. Right. Cause, cause there is this whole, right. Like travel ball, club gymnastics, mm. whatever that club cheer and dance stuff yeah. is. Like there are a lot of ways to be very involved in sports yes. and athletics that have mm-hmm. nothing to do with your school. Absolutely. In a way that is also, I think, different than we were. Oh, we were yeah. Oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the three sport athlete is almost extinct. Right. Because students, student athletes are told to specialize, specialize and just get really, really good. And every parents particularly are just really obsessed with their kid getting really really good and then hopefully getting a college scholarship and so few of them do right but it's really hard like why do you want your 17 year old getting tommy john surgery mm, whatever no. that it's an elbow surgery or wrist <laughs> surgery i know it's like if you pitch too much you end up getting tommy john yes, surgery and yes. the, the age on that has been dropping it because has. kids don't play mm-hmm. multiple sports right exactly yeah like and the then, best thing you can do for your pitcher is give them an off season yes so mm-hmm said the childless woman <laughs> <laughs> but it's true i mean yeah like, yeah like the number of girls who injured their acls or torn their acls right. in soccer is enormous yeah and girls are girls and women are prone to that injury mm-hmm. something about our biology yeah doesn't mean we can't play soccer it's just mm-hmm. you know we need to figure out why so we can help prevent it right and maybe that means not playing soccer 12 months of the year right Mm. Wow. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there are differences. Right. Yeah. But we just need to be aware and yeah. figure how to do that. So when does, 
Title IX, or I'm sorry, did we get through all the no, even yeah. basic rules yeah, yet? Yeah, those are the three things. Okay. It's parity, you're moving towards equity, mm-hmm. demonstrable movement. Yes. And nobody's complaining. Right. Yeah. And not because you scared them from complaining. Right, exactly. Yeah. So there's different ways. Yeah. You don't have to kill the wrestling team. Yeah. Right. To <laughs> be okay with Title IX. <laughs> <laughs> what move, What show is that? It's what there's a girls soccer team show where they like cannibalize each other. And now they're <laughs> uh, yes. yellow jackets, yellow jackets. <laughs> I haven't watched it. Oh, my That's God. That's what I know based on Twitter. And it's such a great show. They have like a plane crash. They do. And they're they're on their way to nationals and they uh, uh, charter a private plane. Yeah. And it crashes in the mountains and chaos ensues right and so this is it's you know what it's okay two shows i haven't watched that both have been recommended to me uh-huh. yellow jackets yes and girls five eva oh i have not seen that one but i have heard good things about it but they sort of both hit this like gen x women dealing with their teenage stuff yeah right because girls five eva they're a, they're the equivalent of the backstreet boys or NKOTB, but they're girls uh-huh. and they're trying to do like a reunion tour or something. Mm-hmm. And then Yellow Jackets is a bunch of Gen X women finally trying to deal with the trauma of their plane oh, crash and yes. their Donner Pass situation. Yes. I don't even know if there's cannibalism, but I just, that there, is what I've decided. It, there's big hints. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm done with season, we're done with season one, we're yeah. waiting for season two to come out or even be filmed, I think. So it, it's sorry if that's a spoiler but there's yeah. there's a big assumption that there's been some cannibalism okay. and but i've so far not seen anyone yeah rip right into somebody yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's a lot of chaos yeah i mean it is lord of the flies Ooh. with teenage girls nope amazing <laughs> i do need to watch it i need to watch it it's on my list um but right now i'm watching Deadwood. Oh. Okay. So those are the three rules. Uh-huh. Now, when does, does and activities also become the clause that then becomes how people, how does then this become the rule that protects people after a sexual ho- assault or sexual harassment on campus or, or does not protect people? That's the right. wrong offers an avenue of recourse yes i'm like justice is also the wrong word Uh because justice is rarely served but like that that says there shouldn't be there should be a path forward uh of reporting within the school like how does that end up in title nine right so it becomes the it becomes a school's responsibility to provide a safe space free of harassment and assault uh, based on Title IX, because from what I understand, and listeners, please write in um, and correct me, but I think because the preponderance of harassment and assault is gender based, mm-hmm. and then that gets put under Title IX. Okay. So Title IX has been the avenue, the avenue, the venue, the vehicle, the vehicle, the vehicle, the yeah. vehicle that you people have used to say the high school's responsible for allowing a harassment, sexual harassment to happen mm-hmm. in the hu- in the hallways, in the classroom, okay. et cetera, et cetera. OK. Yeah, I just I. I at some level, mm-hmm. I knew both were Title Nine, but I had never really truly grok that that they were both title nine if that makes sense yeah absolutely we have to do title nine training at work every, every year yes yeah These little animated videos on online yeah. slideshows and do they ever update them oh they do okay they do and there's a way to opt out if you think the training will be super triggering okay and yeah. you know it is. I don't opt out, but it, it is. Yeah. But I, I feel like I, I can, I need to go through it so I know what's in it yeah. as well as, yeah. a, as an advocate. So, but, um, but yeah, I think that there's, it's not so much the inactivity. It's the fact that it's an educational, educa- educational setting mm-hmm. and that harassment and 
sexual violence happens. Yeah. So much. It's it's so gendered. Yeah. And so then they put it under Title IX. Okay. Um, so this is. So, okay. And you you asked if I would be having an episode about Title mm-hmm. IX because it's the 50th anniversary. It is. And not because it's been severely weakened by the Supreme Court in the last six months, right? <laughs> right. I, for some because reason, I was like, I was really like, what the fuck they do to Title IX? <laughs> it's because it's the 50th anniversary. Yes. 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 And it's celebratory. And yes. Everyone's having specials and town halls. Yeah. And the other day I drove past the city hall and there was like banners up celebrating Title IX. That's cool. And there was a, a sky game a few weeks ago. And afterwards there was a panel with Candace Parker and a few other people talking about Title IX. Wow. Including the mayor and Doug Bruno, who... Um, coaches uh DePaul's women's basketball okay. team and has for years and has been like he the poster be. child for men who support women's sports uh, okay and he sits front row at the sky games nice. and yeah do they play him on with we don't talk about Bruno <laughs> <laughs> he must be so- I feel sorry for any Bruno out there because as soon as you said his name I was like we don't talk about Bruno <laughs> we should talk about this Bruno. yeah He's so great. Doug Bruno coaches women's mm-hmm. basketball yes. at DePaul. Yeah. But is also like a visible yes. um accomplice mm-hmm. in in getting more girls and women involved in sports. Yeah, absolutely. Great. In terms of raising its profile and everything like that. Yeah. What do you think either in your own experience or as a college administrator who's not speaking on behalf of their college, <laughs> um what do you think are like the biggest wins of title nine like what do you think when you look around a school make you say yeah it's it's working um the the wins that i mean just looking at the fact that in 1972 um oh there were not very many women playing college Mm -hmm. sports and now there's a lot more women playing college sports in 1972 it was really hard to find a woman doctor and now yeah you know women are at least half if not more half of every medical school entry oh you're watching like a very slow realization we've been talking so much about sports but this is also this women in professional services mm -hmm. who had to who weren't being let into law school you said law school at the very beginning and i forgot i had amnesia they're not, they're not, they weren't getting to law school, medical school, all these sorts of things. Um, back in like, I think the night, late 80s, early 90s, yeah. um, women took over the number of spots in veterinary schools. Right. And now it's really hard to find a man who is a veterinarian. Right. Um, in almost all those spaces. It just, there are some fields that flipped completely over. Because once they women, started letting women go there. Once they started letting women go to school. End. Huh. Yeah. So those are the big wins. And, you know, and I spent um, like 12 years running a women in science engineering yeah. program. And that's the basis of all of that work. Right. Is Title IX being able to making it. I mean, before Title IX, high schools can say, you know what? Girls don't need calculus in high school. So you you don't you don't get to take calculus. But also, girls don't need shop class, so it's only for the boys because only men go on to become mechanics. Um, This is when I wish I took video because the look on my face is not good. (laughs) Or even boys being able to get into home ec classes in the 70s was a thing. So again, apparently feminism works for both, for everybody, Mm -hmm. all the genders. And we're seeing what we see today is demonstrably different than what the world looked like in 1972 in terms of who's doing what kind of jobs yeah um of course the challenge is that once women take over a profession then it gets devalued yeah so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, there is that that phenomenon right still being studied yes definitely the wages go down once women are Mm -hmm. the majority of right the professor right the professional class but that's it's just because 
I think it's true, right? I'm 45. I'm five years younger than the act. Yes. So, you know, we grew up hearing women could become anything. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just young enough to have often encountered white women in professional roles. Mm -hmm. I won't I won't say like women of color. I haven't always seen like now when I go to Northwestern, like there are women of color, like and both like on both sides of the desk right. of, like the nurses and the doctors mm-hmm. are women of color um but i i will acknowledge that that those are two different timelines right absolutely yeah yes does title nine have any it doesn't have any any protection in it for race it is strictly gender it is strictly gender yeah yes and actually technically it's strictly sex and so okay. a lot of the things that it, it's been used and pulled to protect like sexual harassment mm-hmm. um, and even transgender students right. under the Obama administration was the administration and the law stretching sex to include gender without actually saying gender. Ah, okay. So which actually brings us to some of the negative parts of what's happening yeah. in the conversation Um, with a lot of this activism to try and keep transgender students, student athletes Mm -hmm. on their assigned at birth team are the right, the conservative folks saying, no, actually we're talking about sex in title nine, not gender. And so you were born on your birth certificate. There's an F that means you need to play on the team for all of the females Uh and not, with your Boy, gender right you're not with your gender that sort of thing going into so the conversation is moving into like you know debates on what is gender what is sex right. what is what do hormones mean right and so things like the hormone you know, testing of like athletes now and they're like oh she she has the, too much testosterone she, so she can't run right exactly and the big argument against that is usually Michael Phelps. Yeah. Like Michael Phelps is a freak of nature yeah. um, in all of the senses. Like his, his wingspan is like mm-hmm. much larger than it should be on a standard size person. Right. Um, and there's something about like, there's, he's, he's got, his body is just made for swimming. Yeah. It is made for swimming, testosterone, body, all of those sorts of things. But as soon as women's bodies start to show any sort of natural comp- competitive yeah. edge, yeah. that actually ends up tipping into, I think, what people think, oh, then she's performing like a man. Mm-hmm. Then that's when they're policed. Right. But there's no... There's no policing on the elite men's side. Right. Because they're just great athletes. Right. They're phenomenal. Yeah. Because wasn't there... I'm just... Sometimes I just make things up. Or I saw a TikTok on. It's not even I saw a tweet (laughs) anymore. It's I saw a TikTok on. Okay. Uh, Tell me if this rings a bell. Uh Uh-huh. That's things like running. Yes. Like marathons. Yes. We're not gendered races... Until the women started winning. Aren't there some sports that weren't gendered until the women started competing at a level or, or it might have been bicycling or something where mm. once the women started beating the men, mm-hmm. then they made them gendered sports? No, I don't think so. Okay. That's something that I, I'd have to look up. Yeah. But I do know in terms of running, women yeah. are closing the gap. Right. So because we weren't women weren't allowed to run marathons right. competitively for yeah. f- such a long time. Um, but now the, the, the world record for men and women, the gap continues to, to shrink. shrink. Yeah. And so there is conversation that maybe one of these days, okay. some sports will need to go, will need to abolish the gender right. rules. Yeah. Because the athlete elite athletes are just going to be the same. Yeah despite you know they're just the yeah the overlap is going to be so big that it's not going to make any sense to have a men and women's yeah division right when the numbers are the same yeah or start figuring out ways to like set up 
locker rooms in ways that give all kids more privacy. And then whoever plays with whoever, if you're worried about what happens in the locker room, maybe give them all privacy. Yeah. What was I was listening to some podcast this week um, where I'm obviously still spending a lot of time alone. I'm like on TikTok, on Twitter, on this podcast um, where I, I think it was how did this get made? And Jason Manzoukas is talking about taking showers in high school mm-hmm. and Paul and June who grew up on Long Island are like, what are you talking about? And he's like, we were forced to take showers after gym class. Like mm-hmm. we were too. Like you had to show that you got wet. Mm. So like, even if you went in and just were like, boop, like so you had to, and I under I understand at some level for like the protection of our classes, our teachers that came after us, like our body odor and middle school body odor, <laughs> but like, you know, maybe there's a way to, to reimagine the locker room that gives all students more privacy, yeah. no matter what body they were born in. Right. So that they, I mean, that would just be better for everyone anyway. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. In high school, I don't, I feel like there was a rule that we were supposed to shower, but no one ever did. Yeah. And we did have, I think like individual stalls with like little cartons that, that we have in gyms now. Oh, we did not. Oh, we just had two, uh, j- kind of, um, what you would see in like, a 1980s comedy about high school or prison. Yes. yes. With like two tall silver things mm-hmm. in the middle. Oh, yeah. With a lot of water, painfully high, mm-hmm. painful, high pressure nail like mm-hmm. coming out of the middle. Uh, and you would just get near a towel and you'd walk up and you'd be like, I took a shower. Mm-hmm. Just like dip your shoulder yeah. in or your hair yeah. in or something. Nobody's taking a full shower. Yeah, no. Um, There's also no time. No, There's absolutely time. not. Absolutely not. Especially in the nineties when you had to do your hair. Right? Yeah. You How do you get those? You had to get those mall bangs. And the, yeah, mall, yeah. Mall bangs were not meant for gym shop post gym showers. Yeah. Mm-mm. Um, what are some of the other challenges either Title Nine is facing or ways that people are is it mainly this way that they're twisting it to um continue to discriminate against trans athletes? I, that's I mean, that's the big thing right now is really yeah. finding a way uh, making a way for Title IX to protect trans athletes. Mm-hmm. And the fact that the only way we could do that in recent memory is through the Obama administration rewriting the rules, mm-hmm. which we quickly learned could be unwritten, right. depending on the administration. Right. So it, do, it, will, it will require an act of Congress or the Supreme Court yeah, which that's not going to happen anytime no. soon. So it's it's going to be it's going to be really hard, and yeah. I think it will definitely be a fight for every state, every school yeah. district. Which is really sad because it's just one, it's inhumane, yeah. and two, the number of trans athletes is really not yeah. that big, right? And at the elementary high school level. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter. You know? And again, it's not like Michael Phelps is going to suit up for the women's 400. No. And that's, yeah. yeah. People are just fundamentally being ignorant about transgender rights yeah. and people. Right. I want all kids to be able to play the sports they want to play. I know. It just, it just shouldn't matter and I want them to have coaches that aren't assholes that, mm-hmm. that understand that like yeah sports for kids are important because learning how to be on a team is important mm-hmm. learning how to follow directions learning how to like like all the things you learn as a student athlete yes are important yeah. and not in how you're going to exercise as an adult but like how you're going to be as an adult right Absolutely. so like let it be a positive place where they can decide who they're going to eat if a plane crashes <laughs> <laughs> yes that is a, a definitely a big life yeah. um and the other thing will then be watching pay equity when it comes mm-hmm. to professional sports and right and this pay equity thing what really moved me and had me 
in tears during the 2019 World Cup final when after the U.S. won in France is that the crowd started shouting um, fair pay, mm-hmm. equal pay in Paris. Right. In Paris. It wasn't in the U.S. It was yeah. in Paris on this global stage. They The crowd started sh- shouting that. That was the theme of the victory parade. Mm-hmm. Um, and cynically, you could say that it was a fight for these elite women mm-hmm. to get big checks. And most of the U.S. women team at the time were mostly white. It's yep. definitely changed in the last couple of years. Yeah. And I think our next World Cup will be more representative of who actually plays soccer right. in this country. But... It trickles down. Right. The younger girls are watching this. Mm-hmm. They're like, Alex Morgan says, I deserve what the boy playing soccer yeah. gets. And that goes to field conditions at your high school, mm-hmm. your uniforms, your weight room, your weight access room, access to your weight room, who gets a bus yeah. to games. You know, a lot of my daughter's high school career had parents in Chicago public schools in one of the more elite high, one of the most elite high schools right. resource high schools in the city we still had to take time out of our work schedule to get out early to take these girls from the high school to their field because there weren't buses it's insane right and I remember hearing about that at the end of this school year that there was yes a team that would like Got to state, and mm-hmm. then there wasn't a school bus made available right. for them. Yes, and they had to forfeit. Yes, yes, absolutely. It seems, and so bananas. Right, absolutely. So I, I am very optimistic, yeah. and I think I've seen it in the way that some young girls see it mm-hmm. and talk about, it, and even just seeing it in my daughter, how she sees the fight for her heroes, her role models. They're fighting for what they're worth is showing her that it's yeah you you have to fight for yourself Mm -hmm. and everyone's worth has fair deserves fair pay yeah equal pay yeah that kind of thing so and guess what even if like professional soccer is an elite sport of elite women and it can be yes and we should pay our teachers more but guess what if we're gonna pay elite male athletes this Mm -hmm. amount yeah pay the women yeah and saying let them make their gobs of money <laughs> i'm fine with it yeah yes and yes and we can have both yes absolutely so, awesome we can is there anything else about title nine that i haven't asked you or that hasn't come up that you'd be sad if we close without talking about <laughs> um i think you started off by talking about how why it's my favorite law and i think it's one of my favorite because it's so short it's so succinct it's so mm-hmm. to the point and it has done so much to change this country yeah and the world itself because you think about like in the 90s you team usa with women's team usa was like winning everything and we mm-hmm. were like crushing it it was like the team i played in last week in softball yeah like just bang 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 yeah it was like guys you need to find another league uh-huh. actually uh, you guys don't love you um <laughs> <laughs> but um but we were just crushing all the other teams right and now we're starting to now 30 years later the rest of the world is starting to catch up right and has some teams have definitely caught up it's great and we're starting to see more parity so what we have done in the united states um i wouldn't say started everything but everyone else needed to play catch up Mm -hmm. and built up their teams and you see fair pay fights going on in australia Mm -hmm. and brazil and scandinavia it's just everywhere. Yeah. And this really small law did that. Amazing. Yeah. Are there any more celebrations of Title IX coming up or, or speeches you think people should go and look on online about it? Um, not that I can think of. I think that, you know, like Candace Parker has a yeah. documentary that I still have to see. There's a lot of podcasts. Uh, the one I was listening to was Julie Foudy's <laughs> podcast. Uh, and she thinks she had like a three part wow uh, podcast okay. on Title Nine. I mean, she was f- pivotal in women's soccer, yeah. Um, and its history and its trajectory. And I love her to death. And all right, um, 
Yeah. So there's a lot out there on the internet. Great. Look it up. Watch some videos. Listen to some podcasts. Go to a women's sporting event. Yes. They're super cheap. And there's so many. There's so many. And they're a lot of fun. Yeah. There's a lot of families. And one of my favorite things is watching little boys cheering really, really loud for women athletes. I love it. Yeah. Veronica, do you want people to follow you on the internet? Sure. I am on the internet uh, at Veronica I, E-Y-E, on Instagram, Twitter. Fantastic. So, there you go. Um, Feminist Agenda is your podcast? Yes. I'm on a little bit of a break because life is busy and it's a passion project. But yeah. Uh, I have a couple of episodes in the hopper, so hopefully and you've got an archive soon. people can listen to. If Absolutely, they listen to them. That's right. Catch up. Yeah, while I catch up. Um, awesome. Well, you can follow me. I'm at Chicago Leah on Twitter and TikTok, at Shy Leah on Instagram. I've literally forgot. Uh, please find. Uh, please go on your podcast player of choice. Uh, Apple Podcast, Google, Stitcher, Spotify. Um, follow finding favorites review at five stars all the big podcasts say that it's important for them so if it's important for the big people that get like conan o'brien money is important for me <laughs> <laughs> i'm here yes. for review equity yes review <laughs> equity <laughs> review us all five stars no matter what you think just yes. review us all five stars yes awesome well thank you so much thank you Thank you for listening to Finding Favorites with Leah Jones. Please make sure to subscribe and drop us a five-star review on iTunes. Now, go out and enjoy your favorite things.